Yes, well, uh, we've got the uh, lovely Pirelli Scorpion range here. We've been kindly sent the Enduro and Trail range from Pirelli. So, well, let's go through the range. So, as you mentioned before, we've got the Enduro and the Trail com um, casings. Yep. Available in both the 2.4 and 2.6. Compound wise, what are we running? Uh, single compound. So, Pirelli are calling it Smart Grip, and coming back to that point where they actually mix their compounds in house. Uh, they're calling it Smart Grip, so it's a single compound rubber throughout the whole tyre uh, and it's a blend of multiple compounds that they've chosen specifically for each terrain. So in each range, there are four tyres, super simple. There's a rear specific, there's an S, M and H. Uh, the S is a soft terrain, mixed terrain and hard terrain. It's worth noting that the S, M and H can actually be used as rear tyres, it's just the rear specific tyre is a little bit beefier, a little bit more resistant to impacts, punches and that sort of thing. As you can actually see with ca like casing, these are actually, that's pretty stiff. Yeah, um, yeah with, with the Enduro casing. And it's probably actually just as stiff as a lot of downhill casings from some other manufacturers. So the trail tyre uses ProWall, which is obviously a lot thinner. Um, it's quite a lot more supple. Uh, been using that on the, the Druid recently and I actually haven't had any flats yet. Um, we've been using some nice ride mechanic uh, latex. So Ben, tell me a little bit about the uh, test mule you've been using for the Pirelli test. I've actually been using the 2021 Trek Slash, so the new new guy. How yeah. much travel's that got? Uh, it's a 160 rear, 170 front. You and I measured the tyres uh, blown up on the, the Bontrager wheels, yeah. and which are a 29 internal with a 38 external. Yeah. Um, and they, they were the, as per the header card size. Euro tyre manufacturers are pretty exact. Yeah. Yeah, the 2.4 is measured exactly 2.4 as well, um, and the same as the 2.4 other Euro tyres that I sometimes use, measure exactly the same. So, yeah. Yeah, they're really consistent. And how about yourself? What do you, this is your, your test yeah, bike so here? This is, um, this is my Forbidden Druid, so it's considerably shorter travel. Um, it's a trail bike, so it's 130 rear, 150 front, um, and we've paired that with the trail uh, Scorpion tyres, which have got a pro wall uh, casing, which is a lot thinner, and I'm using the 2.4 uh, width, which fits perfectly. There's heaps of room in the back of this. It fit the 2.6s easily as well. Um, I actually prefer the 2.4 width. Um, I just find it's a little bit more direct. Um, it doesn't have as much sort of squirm or uh, deforming when running slightly lower pressures. How much pressure are you running in your um, Enduro casing 2.6? So I started off with that 25 in the rear and a 22 in the, in the front. Um, then I actually dropped it down to like 24 and then I went 21, 20, give or take the gauges jump up and down because I just found that they were skating around a little bit and I think that was the bigger bag yep. um, compared to what I'm normally used to. How about yourself? Like with the thinner casing, what have you been running? Um, with the thinner casing, with the Pro Wall, I've been running a little bit higher pressure. Just obviously these are our test control wheels and I don't want to wreck them. I've been using 26.5 PSI in the front and 28.5 PSI in the rear. Um, obviously being a thinner sidewall and a carbon wheel, I want to just have that little bit more cushion. Obviously they're quite supple in comparison to the enduro casing. So just making sure there's enough cushion in there when I'm hitting stuff um, and it's not deforming, but they've been really solid. Obviously there's a, there's a couple of spots on the um, tire where I've, I've hit them quite hard and rimmed out and it's, it's held up fine. I've had no issues so far. Uh, so we've both been using the new Bontrager Line Elite 30 wheel set. And um, between the two of us, we're probably pretty rough on that type of equipment. And we're not, so like you said, you're not seeing any wet spots on the tires. No. I haven't burped any tires. I've rimmed out quite a few times. Yeah, I, I did, like I said before, I did the other day. Um, and I inspected the rim, there was no damage on the rim either. So speaking of the conditions we had at home, do you want to just pass us that guy? 
Okay. So as you can see here, this is a lot more aggressive uh, tread pattern here. This is a, one of the soft terrain tires. Um, it's, I wouldn't call it a mud tire or anything like that. We haven't been riding in like, full slop or anything like that. And, uh, <laughs> uh, but, but the ground's been very wet uh, and, and that sort of thing. Been, you can run this on the rear as well. This has been hooking up really good. But I did find when you got onto like a lot of rocks that had like probably not seen a lot of moisture lately, so they had a lot of like moss and lichen and things like that on them. I was getting a lot of deflection. I was getting shot around a bit. A bit glancing. Yeah, glancing off a few things. And you can see it in the sidewalls on this where it's, it's there's no damage to it, but there are definitely scuff marks in the logos yeah. um, where that's happened. But until I got onto those rocks, and it's hard to say that another tire would have been any better. Um, just with the conditions that we've been riding in. And I think it's just worth noting that uh, whilst this is a very aggressive tread and it might sort of draw people's attention and go, that, that's gonna be like, you know, nice meaty tire. Um, reminds me of my Scorpions on my um, RMZ 450. But you, you've got to ride them for the terrain. It, it is a soft terrain tire where if you're gonna be on rocks, there's probably gonna be a lot of stuff dragged onto them as well. So that'll probably grip a lot better so in that sort of condition. So really need to go into the dirt yeah. to grip. Um, and that's where, that's where with the, say, mixed terrain, which should be this guy here. So the mixed is not too dissimilar to the, um, the rear specific. Um, a little bit more of a shoulder on the side knob as well. Um, it's worth noting with all of these tires as well that the way the, the knobs are um, sort of spaced and chamfered as well, that they do eject mud really well. Yeah, I had no issues with them clogging up at all. No, none at all. So even some of our local trails, there's a little bit of clay and obviously we've been trying to stay off the trails as much as possible, but it's really sticky and you can see on my bike as well, of course it's washed, um, it didn't pick up any of that dirt. It, they really flick dirt off quite easily, which not all trip patterns do. Uh, so we've been riding in some pretty good conditions. Uh, the dirt's been really tacky when it hasn't been too sloppy. Um, it's been that pretty pretty perfect mix, like yeah. also riding in pine forests and things like that as well, but in the, in the sand. Yeah, uh, and that's where that um, soft terrain tire has been. Oh, it's really the good. tire for that. It's, it's yeah. like, that's what it's made for. It's made for that, like that black dirt that you get in Europe and in New Zealand yeah. and, and some of the places, some of the places around Australia, um, like Medina and yeah. other places in Tasmania. Um, and that's and that sort of like wet sand we've been riding yeah. in. It's a little bit on the hard pack, on the small parts of hard pack and um, dry hard pack that we've been riding lately. There hasn't been much of it um, because it's got quite a, a tall knob and it's also quite a hard compound it does tend to sort of skate a little bit um, it just can't purchase into the ground um, and that's where something like the mixed terrain would probably do a better job it obviously have more knobs so more edges to bite in uh, a little bit shallower profile as well uh, so it won't roll so on that high profile you mentioned before that those were a three uh, uh, the center knobs were a 3.4 yeah. mil. So this, the center knob on this was a 5.2. So that's considerably taller. Yeah, so it's, yeah, two mils. What about the side knobs? Side knobs? The side knobs are off the chart. Yeah. <laughs> they are. It's, yeah. That would must no, be, no, it must no. be a seven. You only, this only goes to six, that must be a seven. Yeah, six is one. <laughs> so they, there you go. The side knob on the soft terrain tire is off the chart on my little uh, tri a tire tread depth gauge, um, which is not unusual. Like the, the shoulder is quite pronounced and quite reinforced, so it's obviously gonna add a few mil there. Something else I have noticed is that um, not getting that knob pairing. Mm. Um, and I think that's what you, were, yeah, what you were saying. So down the, the base of the knob, uh, you'll often see like knob tearing. You find that with a lot of, yeah, with a lot of European tyres um, where the tyre tends to round off as it wears as opposed to um, some other manufacturer. Yeah, and, and actually the knobs are sort of ripping off. Yeah. Um, and maybe that's going back to what you were saying before about that rubber compound that they've got. 
because yeah. this is a single, like it's a single compound. This isn't some manufacturers smart use. Grip. Yeah, so they call it smart grip, but some manufacturers will go um, a firmer compound with a soft compound on top of it. So that way it lasts a bit longer, but that tends to tear off the top. Um, and that's where you'll see on your preferred turning side on the front, you often see the knobs, knobs yeah. tearing. Uh, so the compound, uh, you really need a flat surface to push the sure hardness durometer down onto to give an accurate reading. There's like a five plus minus five discrepancy, but pretty consistently across the range, these tires are about a 60 sure hardness, which is probably a little bit harder than I'm used to. Um, which, and you can kind of notice on the wet rock, it's a little bit more glancy. Uh, and that's, I guess also yeah. as well, we've been dragging dirt onto the wet rocks that we're riding. So it's been a little bit sandy, um, but generally that sort of 50, 55 sure hardness is a little bit stickier. So Ben, where do you normally ride and which tire would you choose for where you normally ride? So the trails that I normally ride are a um, combination of pine forest and, and rock. Yep. Um, so it's that sandy, can, sandy sort of terrain. So um, soft, but then hard rock. Soft and hard rock, but when it's dry, the sand offers you less less grip than anything else, more slowing you down. Um, I generally tend to run a semi-slick rear tire yep. because of that whole like, sand makes no difference, what you sort of got slowing down the back, but I'm generally on rock, so it, it's gripping on that. And sideways. And I, <laughs> I do love to get sideways. Um, I would probably go for the the, um, the mediums, like this guy you've got here. So on the rear? Um, would you, so would you run the rear specific as the rear specific? No, I still think I would think I'd run these front and rear, but but in a two yeah. in a two four. Yep. Um, in the hyper wall, so the yeah, I would go down to the. I actually would go down a casing from the enduro casing. I'd go down to the trail casing, um, so I can go back up that few psi. Yep. Well, I haven't had any issues with the trail casing, which I'm really surprised about. Because um, you really wanted to run the enduro casings up up front, didn't you? Yep. Well, yeah, not on so the front, but like, I first. I normally run, I ride a lot of rock. Um, and I like, I guess from riding motorbikes, I like to take the line that I want to take, um, which with push bikes isn't always the best thing. Um, so I do break a lot of tires and wheels. So I typically go for a really thick tire, run higher pressures, and I really don't like tire squirm at all. So if a tire is deforming and moving underneath me, I don't, I don't like the feel of it. So I would run more pressure to avoid that or a thicker casing. Um, but yeah, I've been pleasantly surprised by these. They're quite thin, quite a lot thinner than I would normally run. And I've had no issues. I still think I would probably run an enduro rear, definitely in a 2.4, or possibly even the mixed terrain in the enduro casing, so the hyper wall, again in a 2.4 on the rear. Um, I do really like the soft terrain on the front, but I would consider a mixed terrain as well for when it dries out a little bit. The Pirelli enduro and trail range, really easy to understand. You've got your tires for your conditions, you've got a rear specific tire, you've got the... Uh, and then casing. And casings. And then, and, and it's pretty much, that's it. Pricing wise, you're looking at $119.99 for the enduro ones I've been using and for... 99 for the trail casings. Yeah, nice. So that's, you got a high quality tire. Like we said before, you can feel the quality. You've got a pretty much bang on pricing for the type of tire you're looking at uh, in the Australian market. And Don't it's really, really easy to select what tire that you actually need for where you're riding. Pick a rear specific, pick a terrain, go from there. Hi, Ryan and Ben here from A&B. You can subscribe to A&B for how many issues, Ryan? Eight issues for $59. That is a good deal. And also subscribe to our YouTube channel for more great content from us too.